This is not a video about the Svalbard Global Seed Vault. If you want to watch one of those, they compose about 60% of all videos uploaded to this website. And not to spoil them for you, but it's basically just a big cold room full of seeds. Who cares? This video is arguably about a much more interesting vault located just across the street. And I'm not talking about the Oreo Vault, which is another vault that's located just across the street, and no, I don't have time to expand on that. Just forget I mentioned the Oreo Vault. There's no such thing. I mean, there is, it was literally a real building, but we're not gonna talk about it. Today we're talking about the Arctic World Archive. Here, some of the world's most important digital data is stored hundreds of meters beneath the permafrost. It's home to the source code for Linux and Android, the constitutions of Brazil, and Norway, and the Vatican's most important manuscripts, all of which are archived and preserved for far future civilizations to read long after we've invented flying cars and or killed almost the entire human population of Earth. And you know what? If you sit through my explanation of that, I'll explain the Oreo faults. But first we're talking about data preservation. Now, the first and most obvious question is, what exactly is a vault containing the world's most important digital data doing on a nearly abandoned island in the middle of the Arctic Ocean? And first of all, rude, that nearly abandoned island in the middle of the Arctic Ocean has a name, and that name is Svalbard. It's a part of Norway located only six Connecticut's from the North Pole, and it's home to the northernmost city that actually has a permanent population, which is this place, Longyearbyen. A few years ago, we made a video about Longyearbyen because of their fun, quirky law about how you're not allowed to die there, but the major takeaway from that video is that it's cold. Like, very unusually cold. Longyearbyen, like the rest of Svalbard, stays under freezing temperatures pretty much year-round, which makes it a great place to, well, freeze things. That's why the seeds are there. We all know the classic Bible verse, for the Lord himself will come down from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first, and the rest of you better hope your seeds are really cold, because otherwise you are absolutely screwed. It also doesn't hurt that Svalbard is, by law, entirely demilitarized and located here, meaning the only way it's gonna get sucked into a war is if someone tries to nuke the boring part of Greenland and misses by a lot. Anyway, fast forward to 2017, and things are looking pretty grim. Hurricane Irma ravaged the Caribbean, people were posting dead bodies on YouTube, and Taylor Swift had just released Look What You Made Me Do. End times were upon us, and the Norwegian data preservation company Pico realized that the end of the world would also spell the end of pretty much all digital data. So when they decided to create a specialized long-term archive for governments, researchers, and corporations to store data for the far future, Longyearbyen was the perfect spot. The natural cold would eliminate any need for artificial cooling, and the geopolitical safety of Svalbard would eliminate any need for, you know, killing. The vault was constructed in one of Svalbard's mountains at the bottom of an abandoned coal mine. Most of the mine remains pretty much unchanged. It's just natural rock and wooden supports for about 300 meters into the earth until you reach the vault's door. Behind there, locked in steel shipping containers, is where you'll find the data. Of course, flawlessly preserving the world's most important data for several thousand years is quite a bit more complicated than just throwing a bunch of hard drives in a cold room. In fact, it's actually a lot harder to keep data from turning to soup than you might think. If you took the solid state drive out of your computer and let it sit on a shelf, it would only last about three months before the data would start to degrade. The bits would eventually discharge one by one, and sooner or later your screenplay about an alternate dimension where educational YouTubers are actually the most popular high schoolers is now just a jumble of unreadable code. Trust me, I know. You can get a bit of a longer shelf life out of an older hard drive, but those can only last about four to five years in cold storage before the same thing will start to happen. So if the apocalypse is any further off than a few years from now, which honestly would be, relatively speaking, a major slay, archives like this need a special way to store data that can last hundreds or thousands of years. Now, long-term data storage is usually accomplished with this stuff, spools of magnetic tape. The same sort of stuff you'd find in a VHS cassette, if you were old enough to know what that is. Tape can sit on a shelf without power for centuries and still be readable, and it has the bonus perk of not being connected to the internet, which has the dual benefit of making it more secure and also entirely insulated from the deadly radiation that Twitter seems to be emanating lately. But here's the problem. Even if you get your screenplay to survive a thousand years later under the permafrost, that doesn't mean it can be read in a thousand years. After all, we don't know anything about the people in the far future or what kind of technology they have. Maybe they have awesome supercomputers. Maybe they don't. Maybe their computers are made out of teeth. Maybe their teeth computers aren't so much computers as they are piles of teeth that have been stuck together and are used as some kind of crude weapon. We simply can't know. So typical tape storage wasn't gonna cut it. It might last, but there's no way to read it if you don't have a specially engineered magnetic tape reader. Instead, all of the data in the vault is stored on this stuff, called picofilm. 
Not only is it rated to last up to 2,000 years in the archive, but it's also designed in such a way that it's possible to read the data on these tapes without any specific technology or pre-existing knowledge about how the tape works. That sounds a little confusing, and also like it might be kind of impossible, but stay with me here. All of the data is broken up into frames and printed directly onto the film in four shades of gray pixels, like this, and crucially, unlike a hard drive or even a typical spool of magnetic tape, you can actually see all of the data with nothing but a magnifying glass and a working eyeball. So that's cool, but unless you can read gray rectangulese, these gray rectangles aren't going to be much use. That's why the tapes also contain frames that are written in readable text, printed in English, Arabic, Spanish, Chinese, and Hindi, which explain how to write from the ground up a decoding program that can take photos of the pixels and convert them back into binary data. So as long as you're willing to take a computer programming class from a different millennium by squinting at a tiny piece of plastic for several hours, you can eventually recover the data on the tape. And now that you've been so good and learned how data is preserved in the Arctic, I will finally, at long last, explain the Oriole Vault. In October of 2020, Nabisco constructed this small concrete bunker in Svalbard in response to 2018 VP1, an asteroid that had a 0.41% chance of impacting Earth in November of 2020. They filled the bunker with mylar-wrapped Oreos and powdered milk and left them there until the asteroid passed, at which point the bunker was disassembled and everyone moved on with their lives, except for me, because it's been three years, and I still haven't found an excuse to talk about the Svalbard Oreo Vault in a video until this very day, and I can now, finally, be free. So hopefully I did a pretty good job of explaining data preservation in this video, but I really only had time to scratch the surface. There's obviously a lot more hard science to the storage technologies and data algorithms at play here, and I'm not exactly the best person to be teaching you those things. So if you want to dive deeper, I suggest checking out some courses from our sponsor, Brilliance. Specifically their course on number bases, which is a great way of understanding how binary operations work in computers, or their course on algorithms and data structures, which will help you develop the fundamental skills to build a data vault of your your very own. Brilliant is my favorite way of learning STEM topics in an effortless, low-commitment way. All of their courses are visual and interactive without any big blocks of text, and they're designed for you to engage with for just a few minutes every day. And hey, if computer science isn't your thing, Brilliant has dozens of courses on all sorts of different topics. Everything from gravitational physics to casino probability to quantitative finance. It's the perfect way to get a little bit smarter every day and to also like have a bunch of fun puzzles to do whenever you want. To try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash HAI or click on the link in the description. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription and you'll be supporting this channel too.